Hi, this is Mr. Mix here with Sun Coffer Mathematics. So this is one of my latest installment on determining the nature of roots of quadratic equations. So by now I expected you to really work through how to use the discriminant and the nature of the roots of quadratic equations. So I've just selected two questions here. So the first one is if one of the roots of the equation 4x squared minus in brackets m plus 3x minus 3m is equal to 0 is x equals to m so the x equals to m is one of the roots so you need to determine the value of m number one and then you need to find the other root of the equation then the second one is a quadratic function is defined by f of, f of x is equal to x squared plus kx plus 9 where k is a constant, and it is given that the equation f of x is equal to 0, has two distinct real roots. Find the set of values that k can take. Right. One of the things that you need to understand as far as these two questions are concerned, especially um, part 1a, you are not asked to solve the equation there. You are supposed to determine the values of m. And once you have those values of m, then you find the other root, okay? So in that particular case, you can therefore go and ahead and find what is the answer when m is equal to a certain number. When you plug it into your function here or into your equation, what will be the solution to that quadratic equation? And maybe you are finding also two different values of m because this is quadratic. And then you plug that in and you find out what will the corresponding or the roots be in terms of x. But as for question two, here you are having an unknown variable k. You are not finding, and I repeat this part, you are not calculating the solutions, which is known as the roots of the quadratic equation. You, however, have to think where now you are supposed to use the discriminant. And then there is also a very important sentence that says that once you let that equation equals to zero, and now you are using the discriminant because you need to decide now what is the discriminant going to be. If the discriminant is equal to zero, then it means that the roots of this equation will be a repeated root or they will be equal in that case the discriminant will be equal to zero but this is not the case here and I know and I hope that you should definitely know the distinction when you are given um, questions where they say the function or this equation has got uh, two distinct real roots in fact when that is the case when it has two distinct real roots, then your discriminant, which is now represented by letter D, should be greater than zero. This is now in this particular case, right? So that means when you take your discriminant B square minus 4AC, which is basically your discriminant, you're going to be, let that be greater than zero. Because your roots that you're going to have will be two unequal roots so to speak. But if the question was just saying real, without elaborating in detail, suppose it was just saying real, there was no two distinct here, it just says real, then the delta would be greater than or equal to zero because zero can also be part of the solution or can also be, um, delta can also equal to zero. So it's very important that you differentiate between these two. Obviously, if the roots are imaginary, delta is less than zero, and you will be told for where the, uh, the roots don't exist, that means the solutions to the quadratic equations don't exist, then delta is less than zero because it's a negative number. So remember, delta is basically that part what comes under the square root, okay, which is this b square minus 4ac. I hope you still remember this comes from the quadratic equation formula. We call that the discriminant. So if that number there, if you do this calculation and you get a negative answer, then it means that 
for that to be negative there, this equation will not be able to solve. Therefore, the roots of that equation will not exist. But when delta equals to zero, or the discriminant equal to zero, that means you are using this b squared minus 4ac, and you get an answer of zero, it means then that the roots, the roots of the equation, the roots, or just say the solution, okay, when you solve the quadratic equation, the solution of the equation will be repeated, it will be equal, okay, in this case you get maybe some, you get something like x minus 1, for example, all square is equal to 0, in that case x is just going to equal to 1. Right, so I hope that this is a brief overview of what I expected you have done uh, by this time. But let's stick to the two questions, all right? And if you still feel like I should elaborate more on the discriminant, I can do a quick video on that and I can maybe take a question when the discriminant is going to be less than zero, that means the roots are undefined or imaginary, when the discriminant is greater than zero, like in this particular case where we're talking about distinct two distinct real roots or sometimes they say two unequal roots, and also when the discriminant, of course, is greater than zero or equal to. So, I can have a look at that if you request. So I'm doing this video with the belief that you must have now done more questions on determining the nature of the roots of quadratic equations. Some of the questions ask you to, to prove where, what the roots will be, whether they're going to be real, rational, and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go directly to the first question. So the first question, as I said, you are told that one of uh, the roots of this equation is m. So everywhere where you have an x, you are going to replace that x by that m. And once you do that, you just clean that up. Now you must be a bit careful here with your algebra here. So don't just multiply that m without recognizing that that negative is also going to multiply, okay? So maybe you can look at this as minus m, and then you multiply through. So what I'm saying is, uh, it's very easy for us to make a little mistake here. So maybe you can do this, and then when you are doing that in your calculation, you probably um, realize that if you calculate that gives you this minus m squared that I have here, and that negative times that 3 gives you that negative 3m that you see there. So it's very important that you do not make uh, algebraic or basic errors when it comes to expanding, okay? Right, but anyway, um, if you were to clean that up, you're going to get 3m squared minus 6m equals to 0. So there's a common factor of 3. So I'm just going to divide throughout by 3, all right? That means 3 m squared divided by 3, minus 6m divided by 3, and 0 divided by 3. So now I can solve this equation easily, and I can find my two values of m, where m is equal to 0 or m is equal to 2. So that means I have determined the value of m. In this particular case, they are 2. So m therefore is 0, or m is equal to 2. Now, we are told to find the other root of the equation. So what you do is, now you're going to take if m is equal to 0, and you plug it back into the original equation. For example, everywhere we have an m now, you are going to substitute to 0. So when you clean that up, you get 4x squared minus 3x equals to 0. So we are now solving this equation. And it's quadratic, so there must be two solutions. Taking out a common factor, then x is equal to 0, or x is equal to 3 quarters. That is when m is equal to 0. But you also do the same when m is equal to 2. That means you're going to substitute into the original equation when m is equal to 2, as I have done that. Now, when you clean that up, you get 4x squared minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. And you should be able to factorize this. And then you should be able to solve this particular quadratic equation.
Remember, if you multiply two numbers or two factors and you give you zero, it implies that one is equal to zero. Like for example, four x plus three is gonna be equal to zero, or x minus two is equal to zero. And then you simply solve those linear equations. Right, so the second question again, this is typically how these questions can be asked in examination. You have a quadratic function is defined by f of x is equal to x squared plus kx plus nine, where k is a constant. Now it is given that the equation f of x equals to zero, that means if you take x squared plus kx plus nine equals to zero, this equation has two distinct real roots. We are not asked to solve the equation. In fact, you will not be able to solve the equation because we don't know what the value of k is. So you can't solve this equation. So we need to bring in something that can assist us to be able to find the set of values that k can be. And because they are saying set of values, I know that I'm dealing with an inequality. That means my answer will be inequalities. But if it was simply saying find the value of k, then the story here would have probably been where given the equation blah blah, has equal roots. In that case, delta will equal to zero. But in this case, it is a two real and distinct roots. And then our answer should be the delta or the discriminant should be greater than zero. Once you now determine your equation is already written in standard form, x squared plus kx plus nine equals to zero. So you can find b squared, which is k squared here, our minus four times one coefficient of the x squared times nine. So when you clean that up, you get k squared minus 36 is greater than zero. Now, one of the things you need to be careful here, you're now dealing with a, a quadratic inequality. And there are some basic things that you need to know how to solve quadratic inequalities. And I always find it best by sketching a graph. And you are going to also in this course be sketching graphs. And once we sketch a graph, like as I did here for the graph of k squared minus 36, so y or function, then the graph is going to cut the x-axis at two places, at negative 6 and 6. Ultimately, those are going to be the possible solutions. But remember, the inequality here suggests that our answer is supposed to be a range, a set of values of k. But now, you look at the inequality, it's a greater inequality. So inequalities are greater than or equal to, or simply greater than zero. The solution is above the x-axis. That means we're looking at values where k is less than negative six, or values where k is greater than six. That's very important that you just don't go ahead and simply just write the same thing by going to factorize and then getting this wrong. So these are our two solutions uh, in, in terms of the set. So any value of k that is less than negative six. So for example, if you were to plug in at k, like if you were to say like let k be negative seven and you solve that equation, you are going to definitely be able to determine that whatever that value would be, it's going to give you an answer that is greater than zero. Okay? You can find the real roots. But you will not be able to find the roots for if you were trying to solve the equation and you pick a number like, let's suppose you pick a number like negative three, which is somewhere here between negative six and six. Or even if you pick a two and you plug in a two, that equation is not going to be able to solve because k is out of that given set of values we are looking for. All right, I can also use like an inequality or number line to explain this further. So it's like the, there is no or equal to in the initial equal, uh, inequality, it's just greater than. So this end of the arrows will be open because negative six is not part of the solution. And so is six also not part of the solution. But all the numbers that are to the left of negative six or numbers that we say that are less than negative six, or numbers to the right of positive six, or as we say, k is greater than six, will be a solution to this. So the absolute value of k should be greater than six. And if you don't get this notation, I suggest that you do some revision work on solving absolute value inequalities. But this statement is exactly the same as that statement up there. Right, as I said, request 
that if you need me to explain more on the discriminant, I can use a very quick video where I explain where the discriminant is equal to zero, where the discriminant is greater than zero, where the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero, and lastly, when the discriminant is less than zero. Because in this particular type of questions, you are not generally asked to solve the equation, but you must use that discriminant in order to be able to uh, make sure what that unknown will be in terms of a set of values or just a, uh, an answer or a, a exact value.